Hello everyone, this is Bart Massey. Welcome to Artificial Intelligence. I hope you're all staying safe and well out to, there today. Today I have the privilege of introducing Yegane Jalalpour, our TA for the course, who's going to talk to you today about the fundamental principles of machine learning in an introductory way. I'm grateful to her for doing this and look forward to hearing what she has to say. So let's get started. Hello everyone, this is Yegane, the TA for the class. Today I'm going to talk about introduction to machine learning. So uh, what is the motivation behind uh, machine learning and AI? So the goal for AI is to uh, basically replace human programming with self-programming, to predict appropriate behavior based on experience, the example would be trying to make the machine learning models look more like what an infant would do. So infants have language skills, motor skills, other behavioral behaviors. But the usual dichotomy is that to create algorithms or restrict tricks and trying to create, um, simulate human behaviors, or uh, in other words, infant brain. And as it goes, like for example, in an infant, as an infant goes and grows up, he would learn different things. Machine learning models, um, in my opinion, it still needs uh, thousands of information to learn and decide what to output and still have some unexpected outputs. And, but at the same time, when we are looking at human infants, human infants most of the time learn by their um, own and they learn only by one example and it would be, the, that example would be recognizable later for them in, uh, any other context. Uh, some AI researchers were trying to uh, solve this solution by creating common sense artificially, but um, still with all these developments in AI and machine learning, we are far away from creating something the thing by itself or the self-programming. Um, comparing the example that um, I said before about human infant, in my opinion, machine learning models are not capable of uh, understanding concepts by their own, which is uh, a huge um, thing to work on. And we are very far away from what we are expecting to do, uh, creating a self-programming AI. All right, now I want to talk about machine learning and systems. Uh, there are three things that I wanna to talk to you guys about today, data flow and machine learning system, data complexity, and ML system evaluation. So data flow in uh, machine learning systems, I wanted to uh, categorize this uh, in three general categories. Uh, the first one is supervised learning, which uh, goes through classification and regression. The second one um, is unsupervised learning that uh, we have clustering association. And, and the last one is reinforcement learning. Uh, so supervised learning, um, with that, we have labeled data as inputs and we train the model, train a machine learning model first, then we use uh, the output later. And so by training the labeled data says we have labeled data and we have classification for uh, classifying labeled data for predicting a class. For example, a very general cat uh, example that you may already heard of is cat versus dogs uh, is to pass uh, thousands of images of cats and dogs 
to a machine learning model and asking the model um, after training it for a while to categorize and classify a new input, a fresh input, a picture of a cat or a dog. So everything is labeled in supervised learning. And uh, the machine learning uh, model learns from the errors gradually as well. But um, if we go through the second thing that I want to talk about in supervised learning category, which is regression. Uh, in regression, we're trying to predict trends using previous label data and uh, predicting a continuous variable uh, from infinite number of possibilities. And um, for unsupervised learning, is when we let the machine to figure out the information that may not be visible um, to human. And um, it different types of um, unsupervised learning are basically trying to groups and clusters and associate data together. Uh, it's not, it's, it's, it may be really uh, time consuming for humans to do those kind of tasks, that's why. Uh, having a machine learning model and unsupervised learning without any training initially uh, would be a great way to do it. So clustering, uh, an example, uh, clustering basically means to grouping uh, unlabeled data. An example of clustering um, is trying to categorize different customers in different categories. And uh, an example of association uh, would be trying to discover patterns, finding association, which um, go together well. And uh, next, I want to talk about reinforcement learning, uh, which in this uh, category of data flow in machine learning systems, Reinforcement learning basically goes, uh, imagine having an agent going, learning model, having an agent, for example, uh, is trying to simulating how a human would walk and uh, trying to reinforce that. And we have a simulation of how a model can learn how to walk. Basically, uh, initially it doesn't have to, it doesn't know how to walk. It would be like walking really in a funny way. But after a while, by receiving some positive rewards and negative rewards, it will learn what is a better way to do the task. So with reinforcement learning, there is no predefined data. The agent or the model is collecting data as it goes by putting itself into different states and by taking some actions. So here I have an example. Uh, I have a figure of how these uh, three types work. First, supervised learning is uh, trying to get the input data and trying to map it to something. And um, a very, uh, very uh, simple example that we that we talked about earlier was the category categorizing a cat and dog by getting two uh, two different labels from um, so many different uh, examples and trying to train the network and then use it later. And supervised learning, it doesn't have any label data, but it tries to output and put the things into classes. And um, as we can see on the reinforcement learning part, we have different states and actions as inputs, and the output also going to be states and actions, but um, the agent gradually learns by trial and error to make better, uh, to have better performance. 
Next, I want to quickly talk about data complexity. Data complexity are um, so many, uh, there are so many different categories. Uh, here in this class, um, I wanted to talk about like uh, two numerical, which, in, which includes discrete and continuous. So discrete often uh, re, uh, refers to counting of something examples and number of students in a class. And a continuous uh, example would be something like is continuous, like, like height, like weight. But uh, the categorical uh, data refers to uh, something, the character of categorizing. For example, uh, gender, which have like um, few options, um, race, or like anything that has category type, like dress size, anything that like that would be categorical data. Now, uh, I want to talk about um, a little bit about ML system evaluation and um, some metrics. So when uh, we are performing classification um, predictions, there are four types of outcomes that can happen. So uh, one of the, uh, as we can see, one of them is true positive. True positives uh, occurs when, uh, from an observation, the, uh, the prediction of, the, of that observation belongs to a class and it actually does belong to that class. And false positive happens when um, we are predicting observation that belongs to a class, uh, at, at, but when it really does not belong to that class. So the prediction says that it does, but it actually doesn't. True uh, negative happens when uh, the observation doesn't belong to a class and it actually does not belong to a class. And false negative is when um, the results, it, it, the result of the classification tells us something does not belong to a class when it actually should uh, belong to that class. And in fact, it does uh, belong to that class. Okay, uh, based on these observations uh, and uh, predictions of different classes, I'm gonna talk a little bit about different metrics too. So um, there are like some metrics that are used a lot in machine learning. I'm gonna mention a few of them here. Accuracy, uh, which is basically uh, defined as like percentage of correct predictions. So as you can see, uh, it is, it is, it's equals to uh, correct predictions over all of uh, the predictions. So correct uh, and recall um, basically defines as the fractions of examples which were predicted to belong to a class with respect to all of the examples that truly belong in that class. So it, 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 as we can see, it's equal to true positives over uh, the accumulation of true positives and false negatives. And uh, one thing that I wanna mention here is that uh, these numbers, true positive is the how many true positives are there. Like, for example, if there are 10, 12, and uh, these are numbers, uh, integers. Uh, first, yeah. And uh, precision uh, can be defined um, as true positives over true positives plus false positives. And um, basically, it's a fraction of true positives over all the examples which were predicted to belong into a, into a certain class. There is another um, uh, matrix which is called a uh, receiver operating characteristics curve. And this is uh, very uh, commonly used as trying to show 
how a classifier works, how it performs. As you can see in the uh, figure, the very um, uh, red dotted line, uh, dashed line, it's a random classifier. So there is, there is no big deal. There, it, it's it's not a, like a really great improvement if we do like random because like if you flip a coin, it it would do the same. So we have to better do better than random classifier. And as we progress more to the top left here, uh, this this corner is the perfect classifier, but it's really hard to achieve. So uh, as our classifier approaches to the top left, it gets better and better in the, uh, the results. And if we go anytime any closer to the random classifier, it, it means that it's getting worse. Okay, uh, next I wanna talk about uh, the confusion matrix and F1 scores. And confusion matrix is a very common and popular way for evaluate for um, uh, for eva uh, evaluating class uh, classification models or classifiers. So confusion matrix, uh, as you can see, on each row we have uh, the instances of the uh, predicted class. Here we have predicted positives and predicted negatives. And on the, each column, uh, we have instances in an actual class. So actually positive and actually negative. So if we cross a line here diagonally from top left to the bottom right, we can, uh, we a better classifier is a classifier that uh, have higher values on this diagonal. And on the uh, opposite side of the diagonal, which, which would be this line, it would have, uh, it means that the classifier is not working well. Um, so, and the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is F1 score. F1 score is another way of uh, measuring um, machine learning um, models. Um, it's, it's equal to two times precision times recall over precision plus recall. And if you remind, uh, if you remember here, uh, we calculate precision and recall uh, like this. And if we apply this to um, this formula, we get F1 score. F1 score is, um, some, some people say why we use F1 score. F1 score is um, a very useful when the false negatives and false, uh, false positives are crucial. And there you have it. Thanks again to Yagane for presenting this material in a really skilled and entertaining fashion. Again, I hope you all stay safe and well out there. Thanks for listening to this, and we hope to talk to you again real soon.